You know, I've never been a huge cruiser guy until I started seeing cruisers with more of a retro feel. Now that may seem a bit silly because most cruisers, especially from American brands, are inherently retro or classic. A big old Harley with gauges, for example, right there on the gas tank. That's only there because of Harley's heritage. It's because it's been there for a really long time, like 60 years or more. Is it a silly place for a speedometer? Maybe, but it's cool. Anyways, today we're going to look at what are, in my opinion, the coolest retro cruisers that you can get today. Let's kick things off with Harley Davidson and with the cool as hell, not a sportster Harley 48. Now I picked this bike for a few reasons. One, I think it looks freaking awesome in literally every color. It's got those awesome old school giant fat tires like the old Harleys of the 40s and 50s, sort of a bobber esque aesthetic. According to the site, it has 73 foot pounds of torque, which really is nothing to balk at. That's a lot of torque. That's only slightly less than the T120, and it's made at the same 3500 RPM. So in terms of power and actually weight, I believe as well, pretty similar feel besides the riding stance to something like a Triumph T120 Bonneville. Harley doesn't want you to know the horsepower, so yeah, I guess we'll never know what the horsepower is. You know what's really weird about these bikes, the not sportsters? They're so thin. Like the tank is so tiny and thin. The V-twin is obviously a thin configuration for a motorcycle, especially compared to a lot of other cruisers on this list. But then you go to pull them off the kickstand. Like they feel like they're going to be light and then you you sit them up and they're so stinking heavy. This bike is 556 pounds wet. That's a pretty heavy motorcycle. Like 30 pounds more than a T120, and a T120 is also a bit of a heavy, cumbersome bike, in my opinion. Regardless, cool, retro, loud, it's everything you want. If you're looking for a retro cruiser, I think this is the one to get. Next up, we have the BMW R18. I've talked about this motorcycle before. It's not necessarily the standout motorcycle from its segment of large, old-school cruisers. Obviously, it's incredibly heavy, but it's also incredibly torquey. I think for me, what's cool is the way that BMW looked back into their past and pulled out some really cool, beautiful pieces of design language, but then they still made an original bike. You know, it's not just a carbon copy of an old BMW. It's a modern looking sort of American cruiser aesthetic, but it's got British, sorry, sorry, German. It's got that German heritage and it just feels like a thoroughly BMW motorcycle. It's got loads of character, that boxer twin. I mean, come on, two 900cc pistons just like throwing you sideways. I mean, what else do you want from a giant cruiser than to feel like the gigantic 2,000 pound motorcycle is trying to throw you sideways? And you can't deny, even if you're a Harley guy, and you're into American cruisers, and you and you don't give a crap about German engineering, you gotta admit, BMW did a much better job with this bike than the last time they tried to make a cruiser in, like, the 90s. Okay, let's shift things up a bit and look at Royal Enfield. I know you cruiser guys are just itching to get your hands on a $4,000 Indian-made piece of British engineering, ticking all the boxes for you right there. But listen, the Royal Enfield Meteor, in this case, is a compelling little motorcycle for you cruiser wannabes who, let's face it, have no money. I was recently listening to Freddie Dobbs' podcast, which is called Freedom Motorcycle with Freddie Dobbs, I think that's the name, and he broke down the cost of a Royal Enfield Meteor if you took one out on a loan, and you can get one for like, in his case, a little over 100 pounds a month, I think he was saying, for like a three-year loan at 5% interest. Come on, like how much is a Harley going to cost you on loan? The Meteor is not necessarily my cup of tea in terms of style, but it's a good looking bike. But I know some of you are going to dig this little cruisy bike, and it's one of the few Royal Enfields that you can get in the U.S. besides the Twins. You can't really get the whole Royal Enfield lineup currently in the U.S. This little single produces about 20 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM, so, you know, it's not a Harley 48, certainly not a BMW R18, but it's going to weigh a lot less, so it's going to feel less cumbersome. It's all about what you want. In this case, like, this bike weighs 130 pounds less than the Harley 48, so it's just like 420 wet, which is still not great for a little 350cc single. It's still a pretty heavy bike for what it is, but it's a cruiser, right? Anyways, I also love that there's, like, 500 paint options and the bike only costs like 45 to 4600 dollars this is a no-brainer for me go get a royal enfield meteor they have proven that they can make reliable bikes they have good warranties good support here in the u.s royal enfield has literally done everything right no matter how much people hate on them and talk crap about them these are yeah these are sweet little bikes 
And boy, the Harley guys are going to be jealous when you start that puppy up next to them. They're going to, they're not going to be able to handle it. Okay, we looked at the cheapest option. Now let's look at something for you rich bikers out there. Behold the Crocker motorcycle. Again, a company I have talked about a couple times. Crocker is a legendary motorcycle company that made American bikes for about 10 years or so from 1932 to 1942. And essentially, these were the fastest bikes coming out of America at the time, faster than anything Harley or Indian could make. If you've got Vincent over in the US, the UK, making bikes, you know, at small numbers, really small numbers that are faster than anything anybody else could buy, Crocker is like the equivalent of Vincent here in the US. Today, the company is more of a custom sort of one-off motorcycle builder, but what's crazy is the time and investment that they've put into basically remaking all of the parts or most of the parts of the old Crockers with like modern high-level standards, but the bikes that they have put out still look like bikes from the 40s. They're stunning, and they're essentially the most old-school cruisers that you can get. So it's whether or not you can get in touch with them and you have the money to get one. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where they're at with production, but I thought I would show you guys. All right, number six. And I actually think that this is the vintagiest, retroiest thing that Indian has to offer. This is the Indian Chief Vintage, and it actually looks like they might not be making this for 2022, as I'm not seeing it on the lineup for 2022, which is kind of a shame, because this gaudy, amazing thing is just fantastic. It's kind of a weird bike in, you know, it's got that style. It, it doesn't really match what the Indian Chief was prior to Indian going under in, like, the middle of the 50s. This looks more like what Indian would have become with all the tassels and stuff. I feel like that's more of a later style for American cruisers. Like, I feel like it's kind of 70s, honestly. But Indian wasn't really around in the 70s. Regardless, it's got that big, gaudy feel of an old American giant heavy cruiser like the harleys from the 60s and stuff get called cream puffs <laughs> by some people like they have the big old giant seats and they're just gaudy and awesome and i'm actually really enjoying this indian forum where they're discussing where to put the fringes on their bike and you just see all these pictures of like leather gaudy indian chief vintages and it's just it's awesome all right number five on our list goes to the triumph bonneville bobber Okay, guys, chill, chill. You really thought I was just going to throw a T100 on this list? That's not a cruiser. Well, some of you might not think that this is a cruiser either. Some of you would be frustrated maybe with me putting a bobber on the list. A bobber is a cruiser, guys, okay? It's almost more of a cruiser than a sportster. When you really look at the history of American motorcycles, bobbers and the whole bobber scene predates bikes like the Sportster by like a decade or more. These came from cruisers. You know, I know everybody started to bob out like old Honda CBs and stuff, but really the bobber scene starts with American cruisers and it fits with American cruisers. So when you think of a cruiser, the original bobbers, they look like cruisers. Anyways, that's my take. A bobber is essentially a stripped back cruiser. So we've got the Bonneville bobber. It's big and it's heavy. It's got the 1200cc torquey engine. This bike is actually pushing 80 foot-pounds of torque. And it's pretty dang cool looking. I feel like this bike is polarizing. I think some people really don't like it. My wife doesn't like it at all for some reason. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool looking. It's definitely one of the coolest custom-ish factory motorcycles that I've seen in a while. A lot better than, for example, the Kawasaki supposed W800 Cafe Racer. Ew, that bike looks terrible. Have you ever seen a Cafe Racer Kawasaki? Like, mm. Anyways, like the 48, the bobber has those awesome fat old school tires that just look great on any motorcycle. Like throw those on a BMW GS and boom, you've got a pretty motorcycle. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that's too far. It's one of the best sounding bikes in the Bonneville line. Also with that slight Flash cut exhaust. You know what? I'm just going to say, I think this is one of the coolest looking retro motorcycles that you can get. I think it's sweet. I love what they did. All the color options are awesome. The gold line edition is sweet. It's a cool bike. And yeah, it's pretty much a cruiser. All right. The next bike on our list is essentially the same motorcycle as the last one. We've got the Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster, same 1200cc engine, same torque, same horsepower, a bit more weight, but you know, you've got a little more room for a passenger now. You ain't going to fit anybody on the bobber with you. In terms of this bike being retro, it's hard to really pinpoint what it's pointing to in the past for Triumph because Triumph didn't make cruisers in the past. It just basically looks like a Triumph making a Harley knockoff, but you know, I'm okay with that. All the Japanese brands have done that. It's all good. The big question is who buys this bike? I feel like this is one of the least popular bikes 
from Triumph. I feel like you almost never see people talking about it, making videos about it. I don't know. I'd be curious if there's anybody out there watching this who owns this. Let us know what you think of it as a bike. How does it differ from the Bobber? It appears to essentially be the same bike, just with sort of a different aesthetic. But I think it's pretty cool looking. All right, time to switch it up. Let's go look at a Jawa. Yeah, a Jawa. You know, my mom actually had a Jawa moped like back in the 90s, and it was hilarious. You had to pedal it to start it, and I think my dad actually bought it at a garage sale for $25, and I'm not kidding, and it ran. Okay, it ran sometimes. Anyways, this is not a Jawa moped from the 90s. This is a current true Jawa motorcycle, the Jawa Parak. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what it looks like. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jawa is actually owned by the same company that's reviving the BSA Gold Star. Anyways, Jawa's Parak is essentially their bobber-styled bike on their 300cc platform. This bike actually has 40 more cc's than their other bikes. I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's like they just bored this one out a little bit. I don't know. Anyways, this is a single-cylinder liquid-cooled four-stroke engine producing about 24 foot-pounds of torque, so actually a bit more than the Royal Enfield Meteor, for example. I'm not sure if these are coming to the U.S. I would assume that if the BSA Gold Star were to come here, these could potentially come right alongside it. And if you do a quick exchange on the rupees, it comes out to about 2,700 USD, which is not going to happen. These bikes are always significantly less in India. For example, a Grom is only 80,000 rupees ish in India, I think. I think. That's what I've found looking this up. I know I have a lot of people from India who watch my channel. Confirm this or deconfirm this. <laughs> Anyways, that's only like a thousand US dollars. And here we pay almost four grand for the Grom. And we think it's a cheap bike, just to give you a little perspective. Anyways, this is a cool little bike. And if you want one, maybe buy one in India and have it shipped here. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's legal or how much you'd pay on like all the stuff to do that but i don't even know if you could get it registered actually but yeah i kind of want this bike it's pretty cool looking next up we have a bike that i believe will be going away for 2022 as i'm not seeing it on the moto guzzi's current lineup but yeah it was there in 2021 so who knows anyways it is the moto guzzi eldorado this is certainly one of the more unique looking cruisers that you can pick up but it's got a really really cool heritage you know this bike basically looks the same as it did in like the 70s now with moto guzzi it's all about whether you want to deal with the potential hassle of Moto Guzzi service, especially here in the U.S., but regardless, it's a cool-looking classy bike, and you can get one. In terms of specs, this is powered by a big old version of that transverse twin, V-twin, whatever, a 1,380 cc's, which is a pretty big bike. This is the same platform used in the California as well. This is a cruiser. That was a cruiser produced originally built for the like Los Angeles Police Department way back in the day. This bike is the Eldorado. Very similar bikes. Anyways, this is a true cruiser. 700 pounds wet, <laughs> which is insane. That's so heavy. I'm pretty sure the R18 only weighs a little bit more than that. But this bike makes just shy of 100 horsepower and about 90 foot-pounds of torque at like 3,000 RPM. So it really is a big old proper cruiser. You know what I mean? Moto Guzzi didn't just like make a bike that looks like a cruiser. Their cruisers are cruisers and they have a real heritage. My dad was actually looking at an old Moto Guzzi cruiser from like the 70s. I think it was an ambassador. And man, they've really kept their design language, which I think is cr really cool. Moto Guzzi is like the Harley Davidson of Italy. Oh, and maybe the most important thing to note about this bike, it has white wall tires. Why aren't there more motorcycles with white wall tires? It's just so cool and classy, but man, so heavy. Anyways, good option. All right, since the Eldorado is technically not being made anymore, as far as I know, here's a bike that you can definitely get in the U.S. from a reputable Moto Guzzi dealer near you, the Moto Guzzi V9 Bobber. Okay, maybe this video should have been titled differently. Maybe I should have said these are the best retro bobbers. Whatever. A couple bobbers on here. Anyways, the V9 is such a classic looking bike. It's it's such a unique retro bike. You know, it's not like a full bobber, not like a full classic sort of British looking bike either. Moto Guzzi just makes the bikes that they make that they've been making for forever. And they have their own design language. And I think it's cool. Now the V9 and the V7 have really started repping solid numbers as of late. They have upped the power on these bikes. They used to be just kind of big, heavy, slow retro bikes, but the V9 actually produces 65 horsepower. So that's the same as the current T100 and Street Twin for reference, 53 foot-pounds of torque, so a bit less than the 900cc Bonnevilles and uh, the Street Twin. 
463 pounds wet. So about the same in terms of weight, maybe a bit less than the Street Twin. I think that one, I think it weighs a little bit more. But yeah, these are really solid numbers. I know power to weight isn't everything. It's just a good reference for those of you who are familiar with Triumph's uh, retro bikes. This is a true competitor to the Street Twin and the T100, and it's comparable in price. It's just a really good option. Some of you might not consider this a cruiser, and that's fine, but it's really similar to the Sportster. Like, look at it. It's, it's got a very similar shape. Oh, sorry, not the Sportster. The 48, whatever. Not quite the same stance, but I don't know. It's a really cool bike. All right, hope you cruiser guys are willing to consider some of these non-Harley options, and maybe you retro guys out there are open to a cruiser now. Hmm. I would recommend taking these bikes for a test ride before you purchase one. If they'll let you, not all dealerships are letting people do test rides, which is annoying. But yeah, let us know what you think if you guys have ridden any of these bikes down in the comments below. And until next time, ride safe.